When was the last time you ever used Torrid? Actually, here's another question. Do some of you even know Torrid existed? I know, right? And thanks to this incarnate system, this is literally one of the strongest weapons in the game. Okay, let me rephrase that again. This is one of the strongest beam weapons in the game, but it's not a beam weapon. What's good, folks? It's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the Torrid Incarnan build and review. All right, let me explain. For those who know, Torrid is just a simple AoE weapon. You toss a shot, you will leave this fart cloud that deals damage over time. And whoever walks into this fart cloud will take that damage over time. However, now with the Incarnate system, it completely changes how this weapon works. Activate it, and it turns into one of the most disgustingly broken beams in the game. Its chaining capabilities are out of this world. So, do you guys remember when Nuker used to chain a bunch of enemies back in the days? Now take that, and then spice it up with some cocaine. I'm standing over here hitting this guy, and those guys are taking damage. Let me shoot this guy, that whole crowd is taking damage. Look at that. That guy's got viral procs. But now raises the question, bro, we need to headshot to get Incarnan. That's the great thing about this. You just need to direct hit the enemy. And you gain your Incarnan. Thank God, because trying to headshot with this thing, is it's, 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 it's not fun. The main fire mode is an AoE weapon. Yes, it, 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 it's, it's another form of AoE, but it's a beam. And as you can see in this example right here, it's able to chain to enemies underneath me. Anyway, this weapon was quite a surprise as it completely changed how it functions. Torrid was always known to have decent status chance. But of course, with the Incarnate perks, we're definitely going to the crit department. It's a weapon that has innate toxin. And now with its Incarnate form, it is the only beam weapon in the game that has innate toxin. That's pretty cool. This frees you an entire mod slot, so you can easily mod for viral, corrosive, or gas with just one elemental mod. The only problem is here, you can't really mod it for viral and heat or viral electricity without it taking too much mod space. And since it's innate toxin, modding it for viral, you will still have the viral overpower the heat or electric. Because remember, viral is just there for you to proc, so your heat or electric can be the main damage source. Hey, are you? Yeah, you. Come here. Before we go any further, let's get a quick word from today's sponsor. There are arenas where battles take place, specially designed to accommodate scale and intensity of massive encounters. They feature a varied terrain where metal meets metal. This is the Mech Arena. These mechs do not move on their own. They're brought to life thanks to their pilots. Nova, my favorite pilot, the former singer and streamer, clone turned Mech Arena pilot and great for people who love using explosive weaponry. Mech Arena has the amazing pilots feature with a variety of unique pilots to choose from as they add a whole new layer of depth and strategy to the fights. Build pilots that fit your very essence to pair with your mechs. Mech Arena's got a ton happening this month, including Battle Pass Season 19, where you can get your hands on some amazing new skins and a bunch of other goodies. And if that's not good enough, there's a ton of special events happening where you can get your hands on new weapons, skins, and a new pilot, Neve. Mech Arena's getting big, and that means bigger prizes, more competition, and more fun. Also, for the new players, Mech Arena is completely free to play on Android, iOS, and PC right now. And you can get my personal link or scan the QR code right here to get a free starter pack worth $30. Rocket Mortar 6, an amateur crate, and a skin to help you kickstart your game. Thanks for Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. Download Mech Arena today. All right, here we are at the evolutions. The first one is, of course, activating your incarnate form. Evolution two, we have two really decent perks. When I say decent, meaning you cannot go wrong with either one. However, one will hinder certain builds. From the right side, we have Plentiful Mayhem. This gives you damage and a multi-shot buff. So the multi-shot will give you bonus multi-shot, but it eats up from your reserves, meaning your ammo maximum. And in the incarnate mode, you just have a magazine. So it consumes additional additional ammo per shot to give you additional multi-shots. Yeah, so you're going to be blowing your load pretty quickly with this buff. 
get into Incarnan, wipe the area, and you're just going to be blowing your load way too quickly to then repeat the cycle once again. So this can be really good if you want straight up a burst damage. However, if you want consistency or longevity, take the second buff. It gives you bonus damage, just like the first one, and it gives you three multi-shot on the last shot in the magazine. So this has your beam last longer and your normal mode of the weapon not consume as much ammo. Because take a look at the normal mode. You only have 60 ammo maximum. This will eat up from your ammo maximum. Moving on to the third evolution. All of these are utility and they mostly benefit your normal mode. Projectile flight speed, reduce damage delay, and your projectiles just travel faster because its primary mode is projectile. And we have increased magazine capacity. You can't go wrong with this. Additional shots, very good if you're using the normal mode. And then renewed horror. This is... So if you want a normal mode build, definitely go for the first one or the increased projectile flight speed. And then finally the last evolution you're definitely going for the crit chance 100 percent 20 percent crit chance before mods absolutely worth it how come man well for one this gives you crit chance and status chance this weapon already has very good status chance and it's a beam weapon it's going to ramp up so fast you're not even going to notice it and the main type of dot you're going to be proking is toxin because if you were to build for viral corrosive or gas the bonus status chance isn't that useful because all three of those are capped at 10 stacks and of course this one is just increase your status chance even more so the best option here is this one bonus crit chance hands down all right now let's take a look at the builds for this weapon and since this is a primary weapon build i will have the set to give me those vigilante bonuses so use whatever sentinel you want you can go with the carrier so you don't have to worry too much with ammo however i'm sticking here with the gin because it can last longer and use whatever primary weapon you want on the sentinel we have vigilante fervor offense and armaments just these three because we will have vigilante supplies on our weapon so that's four vigilante mods that's 20 percent chance to enhance the crits meaning that's 20 percent chance to hit an additional critical tier let's take a look at the first build this is my Beam Hunter Munitions build. Primary Merciless is going to be our base damage. This will give us 360% base damage at max stacks. And that reload speed. Reload speed is very useful if you want to go into Incarnate form. Faction Damage mod to multiply our damage and DOTs. What is our DOT here? Well, it's Hunter Munitions. Cry arounds here because we don't need to run a 60-60. You already have more than enough status chance. Prime Shred, Punch Through, and Fire Rates. Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Galvanize Aptitude for the Direct Hit Damage and increasing the damage when they have additional status effects on them and hunter munitions to apply bleeds whenever we crit and of course vigilante supplies for the ammo mutation and to increase the critical tier in the incarnate form we have 147 percent crit 6.8 critical multiplier and 70 percent status chance that's what galvanize aptitude alone i understand why we don't really need that much status chance Okay, now let's take a look at the Corrosive build. The Corrosive build is, of course, going to be slightly different. In this case, we're not going to be using Hunter Munitions. I went with Galvanized Scope. If you want, you can go with Bladed Rounds for the additional crit damage. However, you want to see red crits, right? So definitely go for Galvanized Scope. Primary Deadhead is going to be my base damage multiplier here, which will give me that headshot damage multiplier. And because we're dealing a lot of raw damage with the Corrosive, we don't really need Merciless as much. There you go. You see how you instantly charge Deadhead <laughs> and all those red crits? It's beautiful, isn't it? Here's a heads up, boys. If you're using the Corrosive build, do not use the beam to kill the Acolytes. The direct hits from the AoE primary mode will completely destroy them because Acolytes also have some sort of damage attenuation. So the best way to go about them is to directly hit them with the AoE. That's if you're using the Corrosive build. And now onto the last build, the AoE build, which uses the primary fire. With the bonus crit chance and our crit chance mod, we have 100% crit chance. We're always critting. Elemental mod, we have prime cry rounds at this point. You may notice we don't have prime shred because we don't need that for this build. And of course, prime firestorm to increase the AoE. And then bladed rounds. If we're critting 100% of the time, let's multiply the damage our crits deal. All right, shoot and things just die within the area. I would say for evolution three, go for the bonus magazine because so you can just shoot more in your normal mode. However, if you want to enhance that AOE even more, <laughs> you can use Nidus or Harrow. Why Nidus? Well, because he has his augment that gives you bonus crit chance on primary weapons. That's just so much more satisfying, isn't it?
All right, folks, that has been it from this Torrid video. And holy hell, this weapon is actually damn impressive. Very fun. I really like what D is doing with these incarnate adapters. However, they do seem a bit band-aid fixy. You know what I'm saying? But at least it's a good type of band-aid fix. I, you know, it would be so annoying for them to go and individually change how the weapon works. So stay tuned for the next one. Anyway, for those who've enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.